What was the question again? The question goes back to how important is it, it, is it for a teacher or coach to play golf competitive, competitively himself or herself? Well, we're, we're talking about the highest level there is. You, you people represent the, the height in the game. You're the knowledgeable people. You're passing your knowledge on to other people in hopes that they can enjoy the game and play to the utmost of their ability. But if, if they're going to, to, to look at you with respect, they're going to respect the fact that you can play a little bit. So yes, I think if a teacher wants to present himself as a teacher and work with better players, he better get out there and, and be able to play the game a little bit himself. So, but that begins a long time ago. That begins when you're into junior golf and college golf and amateur golf. But uh, there are exceptions to that, certainly, because in today's world with teaching, we're into a world of specialist. We're into the head game. We're into the physical part of the game. We're into the technical part of the game. But, but all of that goes to help us play the game better. And at, at some point, we want to try to answer that question today. What is playing the game? Okay. I'll let you head right off in that direction. What is playing the game, Eddie? What does that mean? Okay. I'd like to hear an answer from any one of you in the audience. What is playing the game? We're all expected to know what playing the game is all about. And I posed this question once at a PGA seminar in Las Vegas. And I sent out a questionnaire to the 80 pros who signed up to come. Explain to me in your words, very simply, what playing the game means. And you'd be absolutely flabbergasted at the different answers that came back. What truly is playing the game all about? That's what we're meant to know. That's what anybody who doesn't even play the game is somewhat supposed to know. If you see basketball played in short order, you figure out what the game's about, or football, or baseball, or whatever. In golf, we don't really get the true message. I'd like to think that you have four goals in the game of golf, four goals that are going to stare you in the face every day you wake up. And 40 years from now, if we're still here, those same four goals are going to be staring you in the face. Goal number one, the short range goal, is the shot you're about to play from A to B. You're going to play that shot as well as you can, however you choose to play it. Different categories of shots, yes. The drives, the approach shot, the short game, putting game. But the object, to move the ball from point A to point B. If you hear the tour player interviewed on Saturday night when he's leading the next tournament, almost invariably the answer when he's asked, what are you going to do tomorrow? I'm going to take it a shot at a time. That's true. He is going to take it a shot at a time. But there's more to it than that. And with some of these tour players, they haven't yet addressed these other goals, nor the, the rewards that accompany those goals. The second goal would deal with the hole you're playing at a certain point in time. Hole number one at Beth Page. What is the contest? Not you versus somebody else. Not whether you shoot a medal score, but rather that you relate to par on that hole as well as you possibly can. Why? Because that's something you can do. But if you go out on that tee and you think in terms of birdie, par, eagle, 10, you can't do that. It's like going to Las Vegas and you're playing roulette and you get one number and you hope that number stops on, you hope that pill stops on your number. But in truth, you have one chance in 36 of that happening. So it's wrong to be thinking numbers. It's wrong to be thinking numbers when we play a hole. When you walk up on a par 5 tee and you're watering at the mouth over the birdie you're going to make, and you walk off the hole with a five or a six, you're disappointed. But the reason you're disappointed 
is that your mind set, your mindset just shifted gear. Instead of relating to your shots and relating to par on that hole, you started relating to something you had no control over, meaning the score. For the round, let's say we're playing an 18-hole round at Beth Page. Let's say Joe Moresco and I are playing an 18-hole round. If we were playing in a match play situation, he or I would certainly know how we stood at any point in time, up or down. But it doesn't make any difference what score you shoot. You might win a hole with a 10. You might lose a hole with a 3. But you've got to win more holes than he does. That's match play golf. But when you go out to play the real game, it isn't match play golf. It's match metal golf. You're matching yourself against par on a given golf course. Now, how in the world can you do that? Let's, let's say the first hole you play is a fairly easy par five, as is Bel Air, where, where I'm from. You might make a three on that par five. So right out of the gate, you're not one up on old man par, you're two up. You're two up, and if you par the next six holes, through seven holes, you're still two up on old man par, or two under par, however you want to term it. But let's say on the eighth hole, up jumps the devil, and you pull two balls out of bounds, par five. Let's say you birdied with the third ball, and you made an eight on the hole. You didn't lose one on that hole. You lost three in one swoop. So that's the difference between match metal scoring versus match play scoring. So on the long range basis, we're going to match ourselves man par through the 18th hole. Then we add it up, and the score comes out to be 68. But if we're four holes from the finish, and we understand all we have to do is par in, and we're going to shoot 68, you can bet we're going to have a wreck at that time. And you see that happen all around you because the mindset shifts from something you can control to something you can't control at all. You cannot shoot a medal score, but you can get a medal score. You're going to get a score. That's going to be your reward for the round you play. And hopefully it's going to be a good score. But if you go out trying to shoot a number, it isn't going to work because you can't do that. But you can relate to par, and in the course of a tournament, the long, long goal for the day or for the week, if you relate to the short-range goal, the shot, the medium-range goal, the hole, the long-range goal, the round, relative to par, and you do that for four days, you're going to do fine in the tournament. You're going to do just fine. And lo and behold, you might be declared the winner. Why? Because what you did that week was better than anybody else in the field. And that's precisely what the next winner of the next tour event is going to do. He's going or she's going to relate to par that week better than anybody else. He or she's declared the winner.